Welcome to the final conversation that takes place between Marco Polo and Kublai Khan at the end of the recounting of 55 stories of imaginary cities that Marco places at the edge of the Khan's empire. Evening after evening, afternoon after afternoon, morning after morning, we have overheard the telling of each story of uh, an invisible city. Somewhere in the Khan's palace. But today, Marco and Kublai have stepped out of the palace and have strolled along the shores of a timeless river that runs past the Khan's compound. And so today, for the first and last time, we're outside the compound by the shores of the river. Each story has been notated and remembered by Ito Calvino in his book, Invisible Cities. And we began overhearing each story in the palace, but at the end of the story, we were in the city that was the subject of the story. This is the final conversation. The Great Khan's Atlas maintains also the maps of the promised lands, visited in thought, but not yet discovered or founded. New Atlantis, Utopia, the City of the Sun, Oceana, Tamoe, New Harmony, New Lanark, Ikaria. Kublai asked Marco, you who go about exploring and who sees signs, can tell me toward which of these futures the favoring winds are driving us. Marco replies, for these ports, I could not draw a route on the map or set a date for the landing. At times, all I need is a brief glimpse and opening in the midst of an incongruous landscape, a glint of lights in the fog, the dialogue of two passers-by meeting in the crowd, and I think that setting out from there, I will put together piece by piece the perfect city made of fragments mixed with the rest of instants separated by intervals, of signals one sends out not knowing who receives them. If I tell you that the city toward which my journey tends is discontinuous in space and time, now scattered, now more condensed, you must not believe the search for it can stop. Perhaps while we speak, it is rising, scattered within the confines of your empire. You can hunt for it, but only in the way I have said. Already the Great Khan was leafing through his atlas over the maps of the cities that menace in nightmares and maledictions, Enoch, Babylon, Yahoo land, Butwa, brave new world. He said, it is all useless. If the last landing place can only be the infernal city, and it is there that, in ever narrowing circles, the current is drawing us. And Paulo said, the inferno of the living is not something that will be. If there is one, it is what is already here, the inferno where we live every day, that we form by being together. There are two ways to escape suffering it. The first is easy for many. Accept the inferno and become such a part of it that you can no longer see it. The second is risky and demands constant vigilance and apprehension. Seek and learn to recognize who and what in the midst of the inferno are not inferno.
then make them endure, give them space. Make them endure, give them space. How to recognize what is not inferno in the midst of all of this. through stillness and listening and reflection and solitude. By looking at nature by observing a timeless river Thank you for having shared these past couple of months with me, overhearing the words of Marco speaking to Kublai and Kublai responding. <coughs> it's been deeply comforting to be able to offer you those words and to reflect on them, on them myself, day after day. There's not a lot more to be said. except to listen to the river, the water lapping, the wind in the trees, whatever comes our way. Others that share this inferno and others who are able to see what is not inferno. There will be no meeting again tomorrow, but I wish you all the clarity to discern what is not inferno in the midst of all of this. And all of this is not. Thank you to Marco Kublai and, of course, to Mr. Palma Italo Calvino.